What's going on everybody, DJ Valentine here right about now. Uh, before I begin, I just want to quickly thank you all for checking out the Nights into Dreams documentary that I did. Um, I have a number of things I wanted to cover in this video regarding that documentary. Some of it are small little updates here and there, while other things are about me clarifying or correcting things that I mentioned in that video. If you haven't seen the documentary, then this video probably won't make that much sense to you, so go and watch that first if you want to know what all this stuff is about. Um, and as far as the search for self goes, there is a very, very minor update of sorts in regards to a potential future lead with the search. Um, I'll get into that towards the end of the video, but please don't expect any major reveals or huge breakthroughs because that's not what this particular video is for. Um, with all that said, let's just jump right in. So firstly, something light-hearted to get us started. Uh, the documentary contained a little easter egg um, during the binary section. Uh, the zeros and ones that appear on screen actually translate to something. They translate to self doesn't exist and if you're smart you'll stop asking questions. So shout out to those of you who caught that easter egg, big ups. Secondly, um, this is a correction on my part regarding the unused audio file, uh, the, the Sora audio file. A lot of people jumped into the comments to clarify that while Sora does translate from the Japanese word meaning sky, um, it also doubles up as a battle cry of sorts when the phrase is being yelled. Sora! And honestly, I completely agree with you all on that correction. I, I, simply, I simply got it wrong. Uh, you'd think that I'd never watched an anime before or something, innit? Dickhead. But uh, my bad, my bad. During my research, it was very easy for me to slip into this tunnel vision approach where I'm looking for as many cold, hard facts as possible, mostly because the video was so full of theories and speculation that it almost felt like I needed to offset all that hypothetical stuff with some actual, factual info. And so sometimes I wasn't thinking loosely or outside of the box with some of the research I was doing. Uh, so when I saw the word Sora translated as the word Sky, I just immediately went with it without taking into account how the phrase was being presented in the audio clip. So yeah, that's on me. I'll take the L for that one. Uh, that being said, however, I still don't think the unused audio is anything more than simple leftovers from a sound effects library, mainly due to the other evidence regarding it. So I absolutely stand corrected on what the audio is supposed to be presenting to us, but I still don't think it has anything to do with self. Next, a few people have asked to see what the unused 3D emblems look like from the sides and the back because I didn't show it too clearly in the documentary. Uh, so here's what they look like. As you can see, the back of the models are all just flat. There's no details back there at all. Um, I think a few people were looking to see if either of these models could resemble the unused boss icon when viewed at different angles. Um, if that's the case, sadly, the emblems don't seem to resemble it in any shape or form. So there's still this huge visual disconnect between the 3D models and the boss icon. And regarding the boss icon itself, um, a small percentage of viewers could see a crabbed shaped pincer depicted in this icon instead of the head shape that everyone else is seeing. And you know what? It's true. If you look at the boss icon differently, it can look like a pincer, like a crabbed shape pincer. Um, but I'm not sure if I believe it is a pincer. I don't believe it's a pincer. Um, my reason for thinking this is, you kind of have to look at all the other boss icons to get a sense of what Sonic Team are trying to present to us in these images. Like, each icon has a focus on displaying the head or entire body of the boss that they're representing. I mean, even icons like Jackal, that could just easily focus on his cape and nothing more, still clearly include a tiny head for its presentation. All these icons show the head somewhere within the image. I mean, even Wise Man's icon, despite it showing his hand, is still technically focusing on face-related features due to his eyes being central to the design. The head or facial features are almost used like a crucial anchoring point to help humanize these icons. So what I'm trying to say here is, unless these so-called pincers were the absolute central part of Self's entire design, I don't think Sonic Team would focus on just Self's hands for the entire icon. In keeping with the theme of all the other icons, a head needs to be shown as part of the representation. I mean, for this icon to present a pincer, that would have to mean that out of Self's entire visual design, the most striking and crucial aspect to represent him with would be a pincer. And I'm not sure if I buy that just yet. 
Granted, we don't know what self looks like, okay? He could have pincers. But I mean, they would need to be some bloody, charming, elaborate pincers for his boss icon to take the focus away from his head and center it entirely on the hands alone. So, I don't know. I still believe it is a head of some sort. That seems more logical and in theme with the other icons, as far as I can tell anyway. I got a number of comments from people asking if the other games in the Knight series had been data mined as well. Um, it's easy for this information to get overlooked, mainly because I've not covered every single nook and cranny of the data mine project yet. Uh, so I wanted to quickly shed some light on this here so you know what has and hasn't been done yet. Firstly, yes, the 2012 HD PC version has been data mined. That was actually the first game to get data mined in this recent project, and I've already covered some of it in other videos on my channel already. Um, secondly, yes, Christmas Nights from the Sega Saturn has also received a small data mine, but there really wasn't anything of major interest to be found there. There certainly wasn't enough discoveries to warrant a huge video on the subject, uh, but I might still do a smaller, isolated video on it at some point if I have time. It would be nice to document it regardless. Thirdly, Journey of Dreams, the sequel to Nights in the Dreams, did also get a data mine of its own, but again, not a lot was found. It was also a small data mine and not too many people were involved in that either. But you know, like Christmas Nights, I intend to cover some of its discoveries in a video when I can get around to doing that. Just don't expect anything too major from those particular data mines. At least nothing on the level of self or anything like that. It won't be huge revelations. Um, some people also wanted to know what regional versions of the original Saturn game had been data mined. So according to what I've been told, the Japanese, Korean, American and European versions were part of the data mine project. This also includes the Japanese and American demos and sample discs too. I think some of you might have been wondering if there were any differences across the different regional releases, but I'm afraid it seems that for the most part they all contain the same stuff, so no luck there. In regards to the theory that Riala might have had a second boss fight, um, some people commented on Riala having two versions of his theme song and wondered if the second version might have had connections to this theory, which is interesting, but I think there's a bit of confusion there regarding the origins of that song. And Riala does indeed have a second version of his boss battle music, a version incorrectly named as Theme of a Tragic Revenge, which is meant to be Theme of a Tragic Revenge. Um, this song originates from the two-player mode on the Sega Saturn. Because the 2012 HD remaster doesn't feature the two-player mode, this version of the song isn't as easily accessible, making some people, like newer fans that have come in from the 2012 port, wonder where this extra secondary version comes from. Um, it's actually documented on the official Knights website from 1996, and it does say on there that it was produced for the two-player mode from the original Sega Saturn version, so I'm not entirely sure if the theory sticks because of that description. It could have originally been produced for a scrapped second boss fight with Riala, but then repurposed into the Saturn version's two-player mode, but like most theories surrounding this game, that's purely speculation and there's no solid facts to back it up. It is an intriguing theory though. I'm not entirely sure if I support it just yet, but it's definitely an interesting thing to consider. Theme of a Tragic Revenge does go hand in hand with Riala returning to have a rematch with Knights. But, you know, make of that what you will. Speaking of theories, um, I just want to quickly say I absolutely appreciate those of you who took to my chaos theory idea. It seems some of you enjoyed my ramblings about that. But um, please, 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 please just remember it's only, only a theory. Okay, it was mostly just my brain looking at the aspects of Self and Chaos Zero and lining up some strange similarities, and some of which were definitely me making a giant reach. Um, it's a fun little theory, but I don't feel like I even fully invest in it myself because of just how wild it is. It's just a bit of fun that I wanted to document and share. I wouldn't want to accidentally cause another Mirror Staff incident where some crazy fan theory spreads like wildfire for 15 years. We don't, we really don't need that happening again. Uh, so, you know, um, please just enjoy the theory for the sheer fun of it and, and nothing more. Um, unless it turns out to be true, which would be bloody insane, but let's not entertain that thought. 
In all honesty, after making the documentary and spending a lot more time thinking about self, after all is said and done, I think the theory that I'm personally going for is the one I briefly mentioned towards the very end of the heads up chapter. Um, I sort of included it as an afterthought in the documentary because the idea sort of came to me while I was in editing phase. I was in the editing stage of the production. I had finished all the voiceover work and this idea came to me and I was like, oh, I should probably include that. So I, I added it in at the like the 11th hour. Um, so it's why I didn't elaborate much on it. But I think it's the one that I'm going for. Out of all the theories so far, it's the one that I think I'm more inclined to support further. Because when I think about it, I think in context of what self represents as an archetype, the boss would have had to been something that reflects the psyche of not just Knights, but mainly the dreamer that Knights is dualized with. So if Knights is dualized with Claris, then self would reflect Claris's psyche. And if Elliot is dualized with Knights, then self would appear different because the character is now reflecting a different source of psyche. Like if we look at the unused 3D emblems, if we consider if these items are collectible items that unlocked the boss fight with self, then I think one set was going to be the emblem Claris collects and Elliot would have collected the other set. And if we think about the possibility of self maybe morphing, I mean if self were to have had morphing abilities then depending on the psyche he's reflecting, one set might be displaying how Claris's psyche would display self and the other is how Elliot's version of self would appear. And if we look at sort of the boss icon, to me it looks like self in this state is like neutral or a default design displaying this somewhat blank canvas but when the character encounters Claris or Elliot, the character morphs into the respective designs that are seen in these emblems. Again, there's no solid evidence to prove any of this stuff, but it's the theory that I feel makes the most logical sense when all the factors are taken into consideration. So for the time being, until proven otherwise, I personally believe the emblems were collectibles that would unlock specific boss battles with self. One boss battle takes the form of Claris's psyche and is represented in one set of the emblems, and the other is Elliot's psyche and is displayed in the other set. That's what I'm thinking of in regards to these theories anyway, that's the one I'm going for. Um, something I think I should also mention is the likelihood of finding specific assets for self in the future. Now I do think self had more production put into him than simply being a concept character, but I personally don't believe we're going to find a build of the game that includes the boss battle in a functioning state. Like, I do believe what Yuji Naka said about self holds a lot of truth and legitimacy, that production began on self but was scrapped when they ran out of time. And because of that I don't think they got as far as programming the actual boss fight itself. But maybe if we're lucky in data mining another build of the game, we might find other assets like parts to a 3D model of self, or maybe even parts of the arena that the battle could have taken place on. Um, in all honesty though, the asset that I feel has the most potential of being discovered is a rendered art asset of some variety. There were rendered art assets of every character in the game. Like even scrapped minions like the Evolution of Cruel for example has rendered art. So if an art asset exists for Cruel, then I have no doubt in my mind that an art asset for a character as important as self is probably sitting in an earlier build somewhere. That to me seems like it's a more likely discovery than, let's say, looking for 3D modelled character elements or an entire functioning boss arena. So while the search continues, I want to make sure that we're all being optimistic about it but also curbing our expectations just a little bit. Because remember that self was scrapped mid-production, meaning assets for the character were never completed. So if we want the best bet at finding a visual for self, then I think maybe a rendered art asset is our best shot. That's the least we can aim for anyway. A visual confirmation is the best we can aim for and anything we find beyond that is honestly a massive bonus. And that now leads me on to one of the biggest points I need to update everybody on because it does concern the search itself. Um, namely, another build of the game. During production of the documentary, I was unaware that the data mining team had actually gotten in contact with the RX, who is the person responsible for helping to acquire the E3 beta demo. See, I'm not actually in the Knights Discord server, which is where these communications took place, so I had no idea he reached out and made contact. Uh, what I wasn't aware of when producing the documentary was that DRX does have in his possession another build of the game, a build that is about 80 to 90% complete. Um, apparently, when the E3 beta demo was acquired by Travis, DRX himself acquired this more complete build of the game. So there is another build already out there. But here comes the however. See, 
Due to various technical reasons, DRX has been unable to dump that build publicly yet, uh, but he has told the data mining team that at some point in the future he does intend to try dumping it again. As I said, I wasn't aware of this information when working on the documentary, otherwise I would have absolutely mentioned this. Um, the reason I bring this up now, aside from the fact that I want to make you all aware that there is another build out there somewhere, is because I don't want people to pester DRX about this. If you want to continue searching for earlier builds of knights, then please by all means continue inquiring with data preservation communities and see if anything comes up. But in regards to DRX himself, I'd like to request that you don't bug him about this. He's a very busy person and I wouldn't want something I said to accidentally cause any issues for him. My intentions for making the documentary were to help push things forward, but not at the cost of causing any upset with other parties involved. If or when the time comes for him to share that build with the rest of us, then great, but that's entirely his call to make and I'd like to ask you all to respect his decision either way on the matter. We owe him and the Hidden Palace a lot for even having gained as much as we have already and the last thing I'd want to do is accidentally rock the boat, so please be kind, be sensible, be patient and be respectful during our continued search for self. Lastly, I had a few people in the comments asking how they can get involved in the Datamine project. As always, all the relevant links are in the description for my videos. That's what they're there for, so if you want my advice, the best place to head first would be to the Knights Discord server. The team leaders of the Datamine project are in the Knights Discord. They have a dedicated space in there purely and entirely committed to data mining. so if you want to get involved, then that should be your first point of call. There's a link to the Knights Discord in the, in the video description. Twitter is also another good place to reach members of the data mine. Links to some of the team members are also in the video description too. Before I sign off, I just want to say thanks again for all the love and support regarding the documentary. I have a few other ideas for documentaries I could make, all with similar levels of intrigue. Some will be nights related, some won't be. Um, I don't think they'll be as lengthy as the self video, but I've definitely taken a liking to this documentary style of production, uh, so we'll see what happens with those ideas if I get around to making them. Um, I also need to cover a few of the other things that were data mined from the Knights series, so I'll try and get on that as soon as I can as well. Um, once again, I've been Digi Valentine. Thanks for your time. Take care and stay safe.